This one has been one of our most requested trainings, and it's a little bit of a tough one because you can come at it from a lot of different angles. Today, I'm, I'm choosing to go at it from hopefully a very simple angle that won't require you to invest a bunch of money, learn how to do a bunch of new things. It's going to be stuff that you can implement today. Hopefully that makes it easier. <laughs> so we're going to go over, of course, we always talk about the mindset behind things first in all of our trainings. That's you got to get your mind right before you can get anything else going. We'll talk about relationship marketing. We'll do some traditional marketing, actionable steps, some ideas that might help you hit the ground running. And then I have a little key to success that some of you may guess by the end of this, but hopefully maybe not. <laughs> and then of course, we'll go over that Q&A later. So if you don't already have a pen and paper, it you might um, do you some good if you had something to write with. <laughs> so, all right. So in regards to this question, this is a great quote I found from Adam Audette. Today is not about get the traffic. It's about how to get the targeted and relevant traffic. So it's not just about getting a million people to your website and hoping that they will all buy. It's about knowing that the people who are coming to your website are going to be relevant. They're going to know what they want and they're going to buy it the first time they come or the second or third, but hopefully the first time they come. So it's better to have 10 people come to your website and have them all buy rather than a million people come to your website and only have two buy. So the mindset that I'm talking about is that mindset, but you also have to, a lot of our people in our, our distributor group tend to fall back and believe that they don't have the ability to be online, that they don't know how to do things that um, they're not qualified to be online. And I just need you guys to all like shake off that belief. You all are, have the ability to be online. You're all qualified to do so. And you all have a story to tell. It just does take some bravery and fortitude, some cons consistency um, and gumption, you know, so shake off that a little encouragement for you. That's the mindset we need to go into this with. So what is marketing? Oh my gosh. Marketing bare bones description of marketing. It's the message you're putting out to people about the outcome that you want them to take. You're always in marketing. You're always telling a story. You're always telling people what you want them to do. You want them to go to your website, buy this product, do this, do that. And that is wonderful. But you need to understand that um, while you're pushing those messages out on your personal social media, on your business, social media, wherever you are, um, people are watching and they're following. So what message are you in service of? Are you, do you maybe have conflicting messages? This is something that um, I want you to write down just so that you can kind of think to yourself later after the training is your personal social media, a space where you talk about your personal beliefs, but then you also talk about your business, but then you also talk about, um, Susie was mean to me yesterday. How dare that person cut me off in traffic or, all these things, but then your business message that you're in service of is I want to help people. Let me help you to kind of get what I'm saying. Like there's the other side of the coin. And we have to re remember that if we're going to be uh, marketing ourselves, basically online, we have to always be aware of what we're pushing out there and what message we're in service of. So try to be consistent. If you're, if your message is that you want to help people, be consistent with that throughout your life, or at least online where people can see you. This message is also your why. Why should people buy, trust, follow, and listen to you? And that's what all of this kind of culminates into. That's what marketing is. Why should people buy, trust, follow, and listen to you? And the reason is specifically with hemp paste, because you have personal experience. Every single one of you have tried the product. You have had an issue that the product has helped with or some other products that have helped you as well. You're, we never just say you have to sell hemp paste. We always want to be a holistic approach with whatever is going to help you. So you have personal experience that you are willing to share. So this is the biggest kicker. This is why this slide is so simple because your personal experience should be all about you hypothetically, right? It's your experience. But when you put it into the marketing mindset, it becomes about your customer. It becomes about the story you're telling to people to get them to do the thing you want them to do. So you're not just spouting to the world, oh my gosh, my back hurts so bad. And 
you know, I use this product and now it feels better. Good for you. Way to go. I'm glad that happened, you know, but in order for people to take action, you have to tell them what's in it for them. And this little W I I F M what's in it for me is really the lens that everybody, every consumer in the world runs through subconsciously or consciously in their mind before they purchase something. So if you guys will travel with me to the grocery store really quick, say you're in the pasta sauce aisle and there's 50 million choices, but you narrow it down to two. You're looking at those two jars of pasta sauce and you may not know this. Maybe you will next time you go to the grocery store, (laughs) but you are analyzing those two bottles thinking what's in it for me, which one should I choose? This one has more salt. This one has more sugar. This one has more spices that I like. What's in it for me? Which one will I like best or which one will serve me best? That's the lens that we need to start thinking of when we're interacting with customers, when we are posting on social media, on forums, when we're making videos, you need to start thinking in the lens of the customer and putting their needs out front. We go back to the the back problems example. And instead of saying, I have back problems, my back's been hurting for 10 years and I found this product that's really helped. And now I'm pain-free for the first time in 10 years. Again, good for you. Instead, we can rephrase that and say, has anybody else had this terrible pain that's plagued them and kept them from playing with their kids or grandkids? Has anybody else experienced this? Because if you have... I found something that's worked for me and it may work for you too. Do you see how that reframing that um, sentence or that mindset will help you reach more people personally and, and evoke an emotion to get them to act and give you the outcome you're wanting, which is to bring them to your website, purchase your product. (laughs) So that's, that's the two um, questions I need you to remember. What is your personal experience? Are you willing to share it and how? So, and then also please write down what's in it for me or what's in it for them. Okay. I gave you an example of this just now, but the next thing you need to do, the natural next step of this is to build your three-part formula statement. Number one, are you this person? Do you have this problem? I can help. So my back pain example was um, an example of that three-part formula. Do you suffer from pain that's keeping you from playing with your kids or your grandkids? I can help. The other example I have on screen is a really good one. Are you a busy mom struggling with constant pain from everyday tasks? I can help. The reason why we're doing this and really breaking down this mindset of marketing is because people need, you need to go back to this um, right here. You need to go back to why should people buy, trust, follow, and listen to you? That's what we're building here. I've said it before in our our previous trainings, we went over it extensively that you need to lead with value. How can you give value to your customers? Because every time you give them value, they're going to build, that's going to build their trust in you. They're going to want to follow you more for more valuable content. And they're going to want to listen to you when you have something to say. All of this kind of leads into relationship marketing, which is a big topic. To start, we'll go over the marketing definition of what relationship marketing is. It's a strategy designed to foster customer loyalty, interaction, and long-term engagement. Those are the people you want coming to your website. Those are the people that are going to actually buy from you multiple times. They're going to be the people who become super fans of you and get other people to become super fans of you. This is just a really important step that I think we overlook in this business, to be very frank with you guys. A lot of you are asking, how do I get my ads to get um, published on Facebook? Or how do I buy, boost a post? Or Google has all these restrictions. I can't do this. I'm in Facebook jail. I'm in Google jail, whatever it is. Very frankly, we're not going to get anywhere in this hemp business in the current state that it's in by purchasing viewers, by purchasing website clicks. We have to be more intentional about the message we're putting out to people, the effort we're willing to put out to. It's going to take a tiny bit more effort, but honestly, you don't have to learn anything new in this relationship marketing. All of you guys know how to build relationships, but we have to also figure out how to build relationships while also trying to help them get to our website and also not try to be spammy about it. So how do you do that? (laughs) And that's when we 
come up here. We'll start with warming up our connections. First, you have to figure out who is the, the type of person that resonates with you. Every single one of you has uh, a lifestyle choice, morals, values, business experiences, all of these things that you've encountered your whole life to shape you into the person that you are. And all of those things help people connect and resonate with you. That would be your target market. The people who are most likely to trust, like, and follow you is your target market. And it depends on your stage of life, your experiences. Maybe you got hit with a sudden uh, string of health issues. Now you resonate with a whole different type of person that you wouldn't have before you had the health issues. So figure out your target market, the people who resonate with you, and then figure out where they hang out. Do they hang out on Facebook? Do they hang out on Getter is a new one I learned this week. Um, Do they hang out on Rumble or in person in different um, social groups in person? Wherever they hang out, you also need to be there and be interactive and socialize. And by being interactive, I mean, go and comment where they comment, create a conversation. Don't just say nice job, or don't just comment every time you want to push a product, actually socialize and try to build true, honest connections with these people. You don't have to tell them your whole lives. You don't have to let them tell you their whole lives, but at least be social enough to make an, a genuine connection and then invite them. So then we're going to move down to this funnel. Once you've made, you've warmed them up and you've made those new connections, either online or in person, you've gave them a little bit of value. Maybe they asked a question in a group and you were able to answer that question, whatever it is, then you can ask them to maybe go and follow your business page. Maybe join your newsletter or see a video that you created on a different platform. You can invite them to take the next step to connect with you a little bit further. Maybe that's giving them your phone number or your email address. Anything like that will help um, build that trust and deepen that connection with that person so that the next thing that you can ask is for them to go to your website and purchase from you. I love this quote down here under ask. Promotion is the natural extension of providing value. That's the way you skip the spammy messages. One thing that is really easy to do (laughs) is to just wait on the company, wait on us, Brad and I, to put out a graphic and a caption, and then you can copy and paste that all over everywhere. That's a really easy thing to do, and I'm not telling you not to do that. But the better thing to do would be to put your own personal spin spin on it based on that target market, those people that resonate with you, based on those connections you've made and use the information you've gathered from those people and personalize that message. So our last new product, I think was the Kona coffee. That product, if I was bringing that to my target market of coffee snobs, I would talk highly about the purity of the Kona, how it's grown, how it has to grow so high up the mountain that it ha- every little thing has to be handpicked and no machines are used in the gathering and of the coffee beans and how the hemp is added at the last stage. It's ground right before they ship it out so that it remains fresh for the user. I would highlight all those things. And then I would also say in my target market personally, um, my friends are recovering from surgeries. They are um, busy moms that are just trying to go through life. So I would say something like that saying, not only does this coffee help wake you up and be more alert for your kids, but it also helps reduce inflammation and that'll help ease your pain throughout the day, whether it's from scar tissue, from surgeries or from migraines that you get every day, this coffee will help you start your day. Right. That could be a message that I'm, I'm putting out into the world based on the interactions I've had with the people who resonate with me on the platforms where they're already hanging out. And then I'll ask them after that message, I will say, if you want to get some of your own and you want to start your own day, right, go to this website and get, get the Kona, the new Kona coffee. Do you see how that's different than just saying hemp paste has a new Kona coffee made with hemp. There's a, a way more personal message that goes behind it. So Hopefully you guys can see the value of that. 
And by doing so, you're also educating them about the product and get giving them value. Okay. To stay on this a little bit, I'm going to stop sharing for a second. We'll see each other's faces again, taking a break from the slides for a second. Brad, do you have something to say? Yeah, you're doing awesome. I love this. Oh, um, thanks. I wonder is if uh, anybody that's listening, can you think of any questions that are really good to start conversation on a thread? First of all, um, someone might say, you know, they had a really rough day and, uh, you know, they were their back hurts or something like that. That's an a open door. Um, what other uh, statements that we can generate, Sheila, or anybody, <laughs> or things that, that you, they say, then you can jump on to. I think it'd be kind of cool to have a kind of a go-to list to help um, open up the door of conversation without sounding spammy. Craig says trouble sleeping. So, oh, you have trouble sleeping. Did you know hemp can help you with that? Or as a lead in Craig, um, I think. I, I have something to add. Go ahead, Christine. Okay. Okay. Um, one thing I did recently, um, I'm a physical therapist. So in my PT school group on Facebook, um, I sent the article about the aging brain, you know, sent a blurb and, and put my link in there. But for a group that's not that specific, I would imagine you can say, you know, do you, um, in your family or your friends, do you know of anybody, you know, suffering from dementia, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, or any neurodegenerative disorder? Please see this article. Um, you know, it may help, that kind of thing. I yeah. mean, I'm not wording it perfectly right now, but Ooh, you're I'm fine. Just brainstorming, you know, with you to and you know, maybe there's specific forums for that too, you know. Mm hmm. There's support forums for many, many different things. And to be a part of those, like I said, if you have experience in those forums, you could be really helpful to those people also. Nice. Yep. Brad, did yeah. you have any others on top of your head? Well, it's uh, I got a little bit of idea from some of the statement there from Christine. And I think it was you, Sheila. Um, whenever you see an article, um, it really generates a lot of conversation. Mm. And so I, I'm wondering, is that then the most effective way is by finding an article, posting on, posting that article, getting uh, people talking about it, and then interjecting your thoughts? Yeah, having um, proof, social proof behind what you're saying. So instead of just saying hemp helps with sleep, um, find a study that says, this is scientifically ba backed hemp helps with sleep. And also I have personal experience because I started taking hemp paste for my insomnia, stuff like that, where you can add, add your personal twist, but also keeping it in what's in it for them statements. Um, I can add one more thing if you'd like. Yeah, um, I do the newsletter and I use constant contact. And within that newsletter, I also included um, an article called um, Why is Hemp Clothing So Expensive? But it's, a, it's kind of like a, not the best title. It actually is a great beginner article on understanding what hemp is. What is this stuff? So if we can educate people more on hemp itself, too, I think right. that's helpful. And along that same line, guys, um... I, I just really want to make it very clear <laughs> that we need to remember to look through the lens of relationship marketing, though, instead of just posting, copying and pasting a, an article link, really tell them why they need to know about this link. Just like Christine did. I, I know this link um, name is misleading, but or this article name is misleading, but it has really great value because it could help with X, Y and Z. It's really easy to copy and paste all the things, but we really need to put our own personal spin on it. And I think that's the whole point of what I'm trying to say is in the relationship marketing, it's more than just copying and pasting or expecting results by um, copying everything that the company does and not putting your own spin on it. But also because you have people that, you know, they want to know, like, and trust you and follow you. And then they're going to become super fans of you. The more you give them that value and that reason why they should know, like, trust and follow you, the more 
um, they're going to want to tell other people about you and about the product and tell them, Hey, you should go follow Christine because she always posts amazing articles that I would have never known about. She's always teaching me something new, you know, um, we want to create those super fans. And the only way we can do that is to actually socialize on these social networks <laughs> and talk with people. And even I had a conversation with a lady, um, in person, I, I brought her to coffee because she had a ton of questions about hemp paste and she found out from a friend of a friend about hemp paste and what I do. So she said, would you be willing to meet me for coffee and to take an hour out of my day to go and do that and answer all of her personal questions about her issues specifically and how hemp could probably help that, or maybe a different product could help that was so valuable to her. And she ended up going home and ordering. So those are the types of things that we just need to kind of think outside the box and um, not just rely on paid advertising to get people in the door. Brad, were you going to say something? No, I love what you said. That's great. Yeah. yeah, I'm learning. I'm learning as well how to make it more personal because, you know, you you, you can in, in your busy day, it might be easier to just copy and paste, but I'm, I'm learning from you. you. We need to cultivate those relationships, really. Right. And one of the things I forgot to mention to you guys, too, in that funnel, and I know there's lots of sales funnels. I'm not talking about a sales funnel. I'm talking about if you think about a funnel a pyramid, not a pyramid scheme, an upside down funnel. <laughs> so at the broadest part, you have your casual people that maybe they like your business page or they're friends with you on social media. They, they don't actively inter- engage with you, but they see your stuff. Those are the people who know about you. And then as you keep going up, then you have the active people. Those are the people who engage with you. They'll like a few posts, or maybe they'll comment a couple of times they at least show some interest. And then there's keep going up the pyramid. You're going to see people who trust you. Those are the people who maybe share your stuff. Those are the people who maybe personal message you and ask you questions or comment questions. Those are people that will refer other people to maybe like your page and become those casual viewers. And then you keep going up. The next bar is the people who are connected with you. So Those would be the people I would say, the people who want to meet you for coffee or the people who want to grab a quick phone call with you to ask more questions. Those people are going to be really connected with you. They're going to be in your newsletter, your email newsletter. They're going to have some sort of way to personally contact you either by email or phone number. And then at the very top of that pyramid, those are the people are your super fans. Those guys love you. They love everything that you share. They love everything that you say. You're constantly adding value to their, to their life. And they're always engaging with your stuff. They're always sharing it with their friends. And those are the people that you want to get all of your, um, casual likes follows people up to that point. Cause they're going to be the ones that go to your website and purchase. Those are going to be the ones that not only purchase, but they keep purchasing Those are going to be the people who drive more people to your website without you doing a thing because just based on their personal testimony saying, oh my gosh, you need to follow Christine because she always posts the best things. And, and I actually ordered this product that she's talking about and it's helped me with this. They're going to be your advocates and you're not going to have to do anything more than what you're already doing. So if you think about that upside down funnel. (laughs) (laughs) Um, of how you want people to engage and interact with you. Um, It kind of helps. I think to me, it helps make things more simple and not overthink things, not just focus on the numbers and actually focus on the the people that you're really impacting. Zig Ziglar or Napoleon Hill or one of those guys said, there's no reality of something for nothing. So our objective is like Sheila's saying is help people love on them and yeah. then the outcome is going to be, uh, if it's genuine, th- people pick up on that real quick. Yeah. And so, yeah, I just wanted to kind of add that. So the next thing we need to go over is traditional advertising. This is a whole list of things that you guys are constantly asking about. What are some things that we can do to get people to our website? We'll go over what each of them actually means. So number one, we start with 
starting a Google My Business page to increase your SEO. The reason this is number one and it's so important is because Google will recognize the posts that you add to this page as content rich SEO. So search engine optimization. That means the more rich that content is, the more searchable it is in Google and will raise you to the first page of a Google search. If you're not using Google, it's not as applicable, but a lot of people are using Google. So this is a great way to start getting some more people to your website by posting and becoming searchable on Google on that first search page. You do still want to be careful what you post on this Google My Business page, because if you talk too much about CBD or um, any narcotic drugs at all, you will probably get banned and blocked from that. So be careful. You can highlight our products and the other ingredients in our products, such as the topical hemp creams. That's a great line of products that you can talk about that should not get flagged, especially if you focus on the benefits of the essential oils that we add to those. And then make sure you don't claim that it'll cure any ailment. You can always say that it helps relieve pain or relieve symptoms but never that you're curing anything. The next thing you can do, well, a part of this list is kind of all the same. It all kind of rolls into the same thing. So um, starting an email list for your email marketing, this is part of that relationship marketing that we talked about earlier. I know in MailChimp, they have landing pages that you can create and those are called lead generation, lead gen forms. You can write a blog post. So I have down here, create a business blog. <laughs> I have down here also host a webinar. These three topics kind of go together. In MailChimp, you can create a lead gen landing page and create a blog post, talk about why these people need to read your blog post, and then put a box that says, join my newsletter for valuable weekly content or however you want to word it. Or another way to do it is to create a landing page in MailChimp that says, join my webinar, five reasons you need to be taking this supplement now, or whatever your topic is for this webinar. A webinar is just like this, the live trainings that we do, what I'm doing right now, recording a video that has valuable content for my viewers. You are my viewers. You are, you are the people I'm trying to talk to specifically. My target market is hemp paste distributors. So I'm creating this hopefully valuable content for you to learn and grow that you're specifically interested in. And if I were trying to get your email addresses or more contact from you or getting you further down that upside down funnel that we talked about earlier, trying to create super fans out of you, then I would have asked you to sign up for my webinar. That way I would have your contact information and I could put you in my email list for further email marketing so I could stay in contact with you. Another way to get the email an email list started is by creating those one-on-one -on -one connections with people through social media or other groups that you're a part of. Also any customer that orders from your website, you have access to their, their contact information. You should be adding those emails into a list of current customers to be able to send more content to whether it's sales promotions or new products or diving deeper on a certain product line, knowledge-based emails, all of these things can be really beneficial to your customer list. Another thing you can do is attend local events. It's almost summertime. Farmers markets are happening, swap meets, local events, like maybe more specific to your niche, like a craft fair or, you know, something like that, where you can partner with local organizations to have a booth at their event for free or low cost. That's a great way to get in front of people. As we talked about before, having a business blog that focuses on evergreen topics that includes irresistible headlines and maybe some guest blog writers. All these four things work together. So having a business blog, meaning you have a blog on your website, when you update that with fresh content, you're going to be creating a better search engine optimization. You're more likely to be seen on the first page of any search engine when you have rich content in your blog. Of course, you want to focus on some trendy topics too, especially things that have to do with your target market, those people that resonate with you. But you also want to throw in some evergreen topics as well. And by evergreen, I mean, these are topics that will never go out of style. They will never die, just like an evergreen tree. <laughs> They'll never go brown. These topics include why hemp paste is better than CBD oil, or maybe hemp paste versus CBD oil, why extraction is not the answer. 
Things that will never be untrue are evergreen topics. These are things that you can continue to reuse over and over again to save you some time and mental space. <laughs> Writing an irresistible headline seems like a, a no brainer, but a lot of people just try to check the box of, oh, I need a title to my blog or my email subject line, anything like that. What we really need to focus on and understand is that headlines are the reason why people click on your content. So if you have a boring headline, I mean, Christine talked about it earlier. She was wants to repost this blog, but it has a headline that is a misconception of the actual article. So it's really important that you write irresistible headlines that will get people to click and read more about the topic that you're going over, but also that tells you a little bit more about what's in the article or what people can expect from the article. Another great thing to do is to invite others to guest blog on your site and also offer and ask other bloggers if you could guest blog on their blog. <laughs> You can do this by finding some micro influencers who are in maybe an adjacent target market as what yours is, or maybe it's the same target market, but in a different side of that market. Say your target market is middle-aged dads who like to be outdoors. That's your target market. But of those people, they probably also like things like cycling or hiking or sports. You could find a blogger that highlights those types of things. I know there's probably some avid cycler blogs out there to help educate people on cycling. You can ask to be a guest blogger on their site and you can also ask them to guest blog on your site. What this does is that you're able to, what we call backlink to and from that site. The more websites that are pointing to your website, the higher your SEO will be. It creates a trust metric in the algorithm. It's telling those search engines that this is a website people want to go to because there are a lot of links linking to it. So do that. Um, other ways you can find guest bloggers, we go on Fiverr and there are a lot of people on Fiverr just type in blog and there's always people looking to be sponsored to have their blog content be sponsored by a product or a company. You just pay a small fee and give them information about the product or what you want them to talk about. And they'll either write a quick blog post about you or they'll, they'll allow you to display an ad, which we also have down here as well. That's a great way to do it. Spend 20 to $30 to get them to partner with you or so that you can sponsor their site and that'll get your name out there as well. So create awesome visuals. This one is something that a lot of people steer clear of because it's intimidating, especially if you consider yourself a non-creative person. I get it. I mean, I have a degree in graphic design and marketing, but a lot of times that creativity doesn't isn't just something I can tap into automatically. It's definitely a muscle I have to train. So in order to create awesome visuals, I'm not asking you to create from scratch. I will give you the resources or I've, I've given you the resources to create these visuals quickly and easily without having to do a lot of from scratch work. I've given to you guys the marketing ebook that I created for you. That's in the Facebook group or in the marketing portal. You can download that ebook and there are a ton of really great links of resources that you can use for visuals, other marketing teachings, and a bunch of other stuff in that ebook. So I really encourage you to download that from the Facebook group or from the marketing portal in your back office. Just as an example, this whole presentation, this recording of the second half of the training, it's all being done by canva.com. I did not create any of these slides by myself. I chose a template and put my own information in there. That way it's a very cohesive look. It looks professional, but it only took me about 30 minutes, but I didn't change any of the pictures. I didn't rearrange anything. It's all exactly how the template is. So that saved me a ton of time. It could have taken me hours, but it really cut down my mental load <laughs> by having a template I could just use ready to go. Okay, number nine, incorporating video. I know a lot of you are afraid of the camera, being in front of the camera, but I have to tell you, part of that relationship marketing that we, we've spent so much time on in the first half is getting people to know, like, trust, and follow you, specifically you. <laughs> 
how are people going to know, like, and follow you and trust you if they don't know you? Part of knowing you is knowing who you are, your face behind the posts, your face behind the business. People in this direct marketing world don't do business with businesses. You're not trying to sell the business. You're trying to sell yourself through the business. Part of that is being a great advocate for the product in live conversations. You can incorporate video in a multitude of ways. You can go live really easily on almost any platform that you're a part of. Take a few minutes to just say hi to your followers. Maybe give them a tidbit of information. It can be five minutes long or less. Just putting yourself in front of the camera, getting, letting them get to know you. You don't always have to show up to present the best version of yourself. Some people just really want somebody to relate to. And if they resonate with you, then they're going to resonate with you, whether you're dolled up or whether you just woke up and you're going on live just to, because you thought of something that you needed to tell everybody. So as long as the content of the video is thought out and will give value to your viewer, then it doesn't really matter what you look on the other end. They're going to resonate with what you're saying and probably with what you look like, because they're going to be in the same zone as you. They might be an overworked person so busy that they don't have time to whatever and you may be in the same boat. If you incorporate video, you can use those videos in a multitude of ways. Say you have a video where you've interviewed a couple people and it's a two hour long video. You don't want to post that two hour long video everywhere and then just leave it one time. You post it one time and that's it and you expect everybody to watch that two hour long video. What you can do instead is of course post that two hour long video, but what you can also do is maybe try to break that up into segments. Use a really easy video editing app, which I sent in an email with all the links and chop up that video into sections that you can say, you know, in this section, we talked about this topic. So you can add a new irresistible headline that says, five things you need to know about whatever the topic is, you know? <laughs> um, but what that does is that it creates the one piece of content into 10 or 15 pieces of content. You can add those videos to a blog. You can add them to social media. You can um, separate them into, into chunks and post them over time. So you have ongoing content from that one, two hour section that you recorded. So really try to be creative with your video content and kind of bite the bullet and just do it. <laughs> uh, another thing that we talked about a little bit earlier is regularly refreshing your old content. So all of this hard work you've done on building a business blog, um, writing the irresistible headlines, interviewing industry thought leaders, all of these things is it's work to do. So what are you going to do? Just post it once and forget it. No, you're not because that would be silly. <laughs> what you can do to keep making those blog posts work for you without having to completely reinvent the wheel every time is that you can go back to old blog posts or old content and refresh it. Maybe rewrite a paragraph or two, or maybe change the, the headline of it to a better headline. Whatever you do, this will trigger Google or other search engine algorithms to say, oh, they have new content. This is a website that's active and wants people to continue to visit it. So it'll push your content higher up the search engine just by refreshing a paragraph or two or a headline. So be sure you're doing that. Um, and then of course you want to cross promote on social media. Anything you post to your blog, your YouTube channel, you need to be promoting all of that on social media. Tease it a little bit and say, in this week's blog, you'll find out four reasons why you need to do X, Y, and Z. This will encourage people to click on it and it will also get you more viewers to your website. Posting native LinkedIn articles. I chose LinkedIn because it is a very overlooked platform. There are a ton of other platforms out there, but LinkedIn specifically is comprised of people who are active and willing to take action. These are people who trust a lot of what is posted on LinkedIn. And if they're active on LinkedIn, 
I know there's a lot of people that have accounts there, but don't ever check it, which is fine because it used to be online resume platform, a job finding platform, but it's no longer that. LinkedIn is full of business building articles and trainings, video trainings for business building on all sorts of topics. You can go there and search just about anything that you're having trouble with or you want to learn about and you'll find a video course on it. So they've really done a good job creating a network of interested and active participants who aren't just glazing over scrolling mindlessly through social media. These are people who are interested in learning more and building their business in self-help in all of these different areas. So if you're not on LinkedIn, go check it out and see if that's something that would work for you in your target market. If not, that's totally fine. There's tons of other platforms that I'm sure your target market is hanging out in. You just kind of have to find them. One that was brought up in the live session is alignable.com, A-L-I-G-N-A-B-L-E.com. Alignable, it's more of a local community-based platform where businesses in your local area are hanging out and referring each other. And there's a lot of teachings on there as well. There's also a paid version of that one, but That one seems to be also a very active community of people who want to take action on what they're learning and seeing. So check out Alignable too. If that is something in your area that is popular, that might be a great place to make some good connections, especially on the business end of things. And then um, we talked about this earlier, but interviewing industry thought leaders, Brad and I are available to be interviewed on whatever platform you're on. If you'd like us to be on, we've done interviews with several other distributors and it's gone over really well. You just need to ask and schedule a time and we'll make it work. Aside from us, you can interview other people that are related to your target market that might add value to your customer's experience. For these types of interviews, you can post those as webinars. All you have to do to make it a webinar instead of just a live event is to create that landing page I talked about and gather email addresses and then email those people the link invite to the live training. What webinars do is they make sure that you have an active, intentional group of people joining you live to learn whatever you're wanting to teach them. These are people who are going to be very interested in whatever you're talking about. If you're talking about hemp paste, those are the people you can say, go to my website and order. You know, we talked about that upside down funnel. These are beyond the casual and the connected. They are the people who are nearing toward the super fan phase. They're ready to take action. So another way to get those super fans into that section of the upside down funnel is to create an online community in whatever platform fits your target market. By creating an online community, you're giving more incentive to reach a higher level of connectedness than if you just post everything to your business social media. You spend two hours interviewing an industry thought leader. Maybe you don't post that full two hour segment on all of the platforms. Maybe you only post that into your exclusive online community. That way, the people that you've invited to connect with you further, the people who are more warmed up, they're hot leads, they'll be active in this online community and they are more likely to take action on your website. You maybe want to save that really rich content, the full two hour segment for your exclusive online community and post it there first. Maybe you break up the segment like I talked about earlier into multiple videos and you do post it to your business social media, but you post it over time. So no, none of your followers get that information all at once, except for the people who see it first in your exclusive online community. So that's a way to get them further up the upside down funnel and and create super fans who will love and refer you to their friends as well. Alongside of that, I really recommend that you participate in forums and groups that are related to your target market. Socialize where your people are socializing. Be a part of these forums and groups and look for areas you can add value without just being spammy and promoting a product. Really make genuine connections in these forums and groups. Also use display advertising on websites. This is something, it's an alternative to giving your money to the big name platforms like Facebook, YouTube, Google. All these places have a lot of red tape. It's almost near impossible to get your hemp ad approved. 
in these platforms because of all the red tape that they have. So instead of doing that, just bypass this, the situation altogether, go to those micro influencers and ask them for a trade or see how much it would cost to put an ad up on their website or um, again, sponsor a podcast, sponsor a, a YouTube video or anything like that where you can either have an audio ad recorded and played on the videos or on the websites, you can have a display ad, which would be a, a really nice graphic or visual that you can have and they can click the link to your website from that page. So there it is. Those are 17 ways that you can start getting more people to your website. All right, the last thing we wanna go over, the key to success. Oh my goodness, these two things seem super no brainer, but you would be so surprised how many people don't even think about these two things following up and getting referrals. So let's start from the left to the right, following up. It costs two times more to earn a new customer than to keep an existing one, plus the average order amount increases for existing customers than new customers. Let's hash this out a little bit. Doesn't it make sense that a new customer would spend less than an existing customer? Because the new customer may be more apprehensive about the product and whether it will work for them. So they may opt for the $35 um, trial jar of the hemp paste rather than paying the full $100 for the 2000 milligram hemp paste because they're kind of not sure it's going to work for them. Or maybe they get hooked on a sale and they order the chocolate, but they don't know that we have all these other products. The more we're getting these people connected and into our funnels through email marketing, social media marketing, live broadcasts and blog posts, the more they're gonna understand that we have a whole array of great products that will benefit them and the people that they love. But in order to do that, they need to be followed up with and they need to know that we have these other things. So the first thing you need to do is of course, follow up with them. Go to your back office, get their information, their contact information, and after about I would say seven to 10 days, follow up with them via email, text message, Facebook messenger, whatever you want to do and see how it's going. Just see how they're liking the product, how much, if they're being consistent with it, make sure that they're dosing correctly, um, getting enough other nutrients and water to make sure that the product is working to the fullest of its capability. These are all things that kind of get overlooked with new customers. Maybe they don't know that they're supposed to take it every day. Maybe their expectations for the product are to work like Tylenol instead of you know, a supplement that works and accumulates over time to work better in your system. Following up with them seven to 10 days after they order allows enough time for their order to get to them and for them to be on the product for at least three to five days. I also recommend following up after about two months. After that amount of time, regardless of the size of jar that they got of hemp paste specifically, but if they got other products too, about two months is enough time for them to have gone through that whole jar or the whole product, whatever it is, if they're taking it consistently every single day. At that two month mark, you can offer them an incentive of some sort to go ahead and order their next jar or their next product to keep them going and using the product for a longer period of time. What we do find is that people who are followed up with tend to keep ordering, especially if you offer them maybe a 15% discount on their next order. These are people who will continue ordering from you. And the more that they know about the product, the longer they're in your sales funnel, for lack of better term, the more they're going to rely on the product to help them because they'll see the value in the product. They'll see that it is helping them with whatever they're going through. And if it doesn't, then, you know, we always say that it works for about 80% of people. So if it doesn't, that's okay too. Maybe they will go to this referral side of things. This referral side is invaluable. This is where we ultimately want all of our customers to end up being. These are your super fans who know, like, follow, trust, and love you. They're your super fans. They know that what you say is important and what you sell is working. And they're going to find all of their friends and family who can also benefit from it. And they're going to refer you. Referrals only happen after you've done the work to build up your customers and give them value, you followed up with them, you've created genuine connections with them, and now they are super fans of your work. The reason why referrals are so important, I know I mentioned it earlier, but once you get to the referral phase in all of your customers, they start doing the work for you. They start 
telling your friends and getting more people to your website without you even lifting a finger. All you're doing is creating a system of connecting with people, building relationships, making sure after they've ordered that you have a system in place to get them to follow up with them. And then the rest is just a cycle. You just keep doing that. And the longer you do that, the less you're going to have to work at it and the more residual income you're going to get because all of these people are just telling their friends about it and building your community without you even having to do it yourself one by one. I would say, I didn't mention this earlier, in the follow-up stage, seven to 10 days, see how it's going. One and a half to two months, see if they need to reorder, maybe incentivize them to reorder. And then beyond that, make sure they're on your newsletter list for your emails or your text list, whatever it is, so that they can stay in the know about new products, sales, promotions, new research that's coming out or different trainings you're having or anything like that that they would be interested in so that they can keep seeing you in their inbox or their text messages and keep you top of mind. That is super important too. All right, that is the end of our April distributor training. I hope you all got a little bit of something out of this training. If there's anything that you're still struggling with or you have questions about and you want me to cover that in a, a future training, please email me at office at hemppace.com. I will do my best to either present that myself or get somebody who knows it better than I do to co-host with me to get you guys the support that you need. So thank you for watching this replay. I hope you have a great day.